In many ways, it's been a career of incredible highs for you, but the low side is that you had all your medals stolen. I did, which was, again, a bad point, yeah. Uh, this was going back now, uh, 92, this, and uh, was in Spain, and we got back home and uh, found out that uh, all the medals had gone. I still thought I would get these medals back. Uh, the medal situation was that uh, where I had them, at the, at the side of that, I had uh, a cabinet where my caps and uh, things that were won, like the two Fairs Cups, you didn't get medals for that, you got little trophies for that, uh, and certain things was in a cabinet. The cabinet wasn't touched, uh, but I had a little wall safe in them days, I've got a safe now, there's no mm -hmm. point now, uh, and I put them medals in there for safekeeping, there were 13 medals uh, from uh, what you would won and uh, they couldn't get the, open the safe, so they knocked the wall down to get the safe out. Uh, so they took that, so that's the only reason I thought that I might get them back, because they didn't actually know that the medals were in there. Right. And actually when they got it open, they did. And to this day, after yeah. certain rumours, I still haven't got them back, whether I will do or not, because they're no good to them. So if anybody's watching now, who if knows? anybody's watching now, yes. <laughs> it would be brilliant to get them back. Uh, I've got four grandkids now, all boys. They'd like to have a look at the medals. The only thing I can show them now is uh, photographs rather than holding the actual medal, you know. But I want to talk to you, Paul, about uh, an apprenticeship as a motor mechanic. Uh, I just get the feeling that helps you to see the real world, and maybe a lot of the young players today don't actually get into the real world. That's true, yeah. Uh, when I left school, uh, I loved football. Not saying I wanted to be a professional football player, I just really wanted to play football. Uh, at, at that time, though, as I said, I was playing for Lee City Boys, and a really good youth club with people like Paul Maidley. In the, and Kevin Hector, etc., were all in the same, so we were a good side. Uh, and uh, I went to uh, Apple Yards uh, to train as a motor mechanic. I was there for six months. Uh, my weekly wage then, believe it or not, Brian, was, oh, oh, I don't think as much as what you were getting, uh, was one pound and nine OP for a week's work. It was absolutely incredible. But of course, you didn't know that. Uh, then at 16, I was signed on on the grand staff at Ellen Road. I said that there's no School of Excellence, but there was like a special training. Uh, so from 15 and after 16, I was special training. 16, I signed on, and then my wage jumped up to £10, which I thought, oh, mm. I've won the bulls here mm. from that. And it all started from there. Mm. But as you mentioned uh, a while ago, you said that uh, with the England setup, I think people like Norman Hunter and myself were there at the wrong time. For Leeds, was at the right time. That setup, uh, George Cohn was right back for England. Very difficult to get George out. And Bobby Moore, mm. difficult for Norman to get out. But at Leeds United, there was an older end. There was nearly bottom of the second division when uh, us lads got in, and we stuck, and we just went on. So the right time for Leeds, and perhaps the wrong time for England. So the medals apart, it's, it's a good life, eh? Unbelievable life, uh, just actually playing football. Uh, I don't know, uh, footballers are very, very lucky. You know, we, we kick a football about, people put us on pedestals, uh, you go around the world, you go to the best hotels, you wear the nice clothes, you drive nice cars, you've got nice houses. And that's why I don't understand the stress. Paul, thanks very much indeed. It's a pleasure, Brian. It's, it's been great talking to you again. I've really enjoyed it. I'm sure the viewers have too, and I really, truly enjoyed watching you play. Look after yourself. You too.